Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexx here with another Master Duel video. So at the time that I'm recording this, the new ban list just dropped live, like literally moments ago. Um, I just happened to be up and have some free time while it went live, and so I figured, you know what? What better way to commemorate it than with some live gameplay? It has been quite a while since I've had the time to do some live games. Uh, normally, I'm gonna slide the mic a little bit, sorry about that. Yeah, normally what I do is, uh, you know, I, I'll play, you know, games during my free time, during my downtime, and then when I have different free time, <laughs> um, I get them during pockets of pockets of those during my week. <laughs> uh, then I will go ahead and you know record over you know my commentary over the replay. So I haven't had really the chance to sit down and record and play kind of and do some live games in quite a while. But I decided to go ahead and get some in while I have the moment again just to commemorate the new ban list here. I'm hoping to be able to do more of this live gameplay like I've done in the past and the uh, future here. The just the way my life is and my schedule, I should fingers crossed allow for some more free time to do that. So uh, I decided to go ahead and jump right in with some branded Despia here. Uh, we're still using the same build as we featured in our Season 10 deck profile, and um, yeah, I've still been obviously liking this build a whole lot as if it's still been using it. Um, as I discussed then, you know, the allures I do like over the additional disruption, uh, the additional advantage that it provides, like you can just drown your opponent's advantage so easily uh, with this deck, and that is I think this deck's main strength uh, is its advantage. Not necessarily even its disruption, because we do see a lot of decks that can disrupt, but don't necessarily have the advantage to then keep up with it, because if you're not negating effects, if you're not stopping abilities altogether, if you're only disrupting, then you do have to tend to have more resources available to do so, but Branded Despia is definitely a deck that has absolutely Absolutely no trouble whatsoever generating those resources. So, um, you know, we're all familiar with this deck by this point. If you've done pretty much any amount of laddering from like probably gold up, you've probably seen this deck more than your fair share, uh, as it is definitely the most prevalent meta deck right now. Uh, it is the most powerful, but again, as always as ever, I do want to emphasize that I don't think it's necessarily oppressively so. Um, I do think it's fairly similar to Tri Brigade. It's a little bit more unfair than Tri Brigade was at the start of Master Duel, don't get me wrong. Um, but it does play very similar, similarly, and similarly to Tri Brigade, um, it's, it can be difficult, but not impossible by any means to play out of, um, you know, when this deck gets it set up, like, because again, uh, you know, they might get the Mirror Jade into the Gu Guardian Chimera into refreshing the Mirror Jade to use it again, um, but there are enough decks out there where, like, you can have enough resources left even after that to still make a comeback play as well, um, the thing about Mirror Jade that I think is kind of the extra kick in that teeth is this, uh, you know, effect destroy all monsters during the end phase. So you do have to be mindful of that. You know, re when removing Mirror Jade, make sure you're not committing too much to the board, or you have a way to win that turn, or you have a way to circumvent this effect by returning it to the extra deck. Um, and of course, as always, one of my main pieces of advice is to always make sure that you're ashing the branded fusion and not anything else in this deck. Uh, if you stop this branded fusion, then uh, you know most of the time they won't be able to continue whatsoever. Not all the time. There are hands where you can actually still make plays even if your branded fusion is negated, but uh, a decent amount of the time, enough of the time, uh, ashing this will definitely stop us right in our tracks, us uh, branded SPA players. So. Yeah, like I said, the build's not really too, too different. We're still using, of course, the Fright for Engine, which is the more prevalent engine. Uh, using the TCG anyway, I do see a, still see a fair amount of uh, uh, OCG players using the Adventure Engine, which I do still think is definitely viable, you know, more than viable. I think it's even good. Um, I do still think the Fright for Engine is a little bit better, though, as it tends to lean into uh, the idea of gaining advantage, which is deck. Uh, it's, I think, more about than trying to uh, curve into uh, negating to the opponent as well with the Adventure Engine. Um, just tends to play a little bit better. Uh, plus, of course, there's then no conflict with, like, Alibur and, uh, you know, Alibur and the Adventure Engine as well, so... All right, yeah, that is about all I've got to say about this deck for the time being. So let us go ahead and break down the list here, card by card, and then get into some live games. So we are playing uh, two Despian Tragedy, three Max C, three Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, two Edgem Chain, one Fairy Tale Snow, two Fallen of Albaz, three Alibur, the Jester of Despia, one Tri Brigade Mercurier, one Ad Libitum of Despia, one Nibiru the Primal Being, two Polymerization, three Allure of Darkness, two Fright for a Patchwork. 3 Branded Fusion, 
two super polymerization, two called by the grave, one cross out designator, three branded opening, two branded in red, and then finally one infinite permanence will round out the main deck. The extra deck is going to have one mud dragon of the swamp, one starving venom fusion dragon, one predaplant dragger stapelia, one titan clad the ash dragon, two albion the branded dragon, one despian corvatus, two masquerade the blazing dragon, two mirror jade the ice blade dragon, two lubelian the searing dragon, and then finally two guardian chimera. So yeah, that's going to round out the list there. Now let's jump into the games. Okay, so our first game here is going to be, well, I, I don't know my opponent's name. <laughs> you see, we got the new Revenge Red Mate, too. I just had to get it. Just had to get it. Uh, we lost the coin flip. We're going second. Not the end of the world, though. It's going to obviously depend on our opening hand. Hopefully, we can get at least some amount of disruption here. Okay, we have a maxi. I'm definitely liking that. Uh, I like the Super Poly going second, definitely more than going first as well. And then, of course, we have the Edge of Chain, the branded opening, and the branded fusion. Now, this would have been a solid opening hand. Okay, they're playing Desire, so it's probably Sword Soul. They also have the Sword Soul board, so that's just kind of an educated guess there on my part. Uh, maxi will be decent against Sword Soul. Obviously, it'll depend if they have the call by the cross out, but we'll have to cross that bridge when we get there. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> Alright, I, I am definitely liking this mate quite a bit. Wow, that's like four different animations too. Okay, here comes the Moye, so uh, let's see if they end up revealing another Moye. Uh, that's not a bad reveal for me. It's obviously not a, you know, end-all, be-all, tell-all of what's in their hand, but... Uh, ooh, it doesn't look like... Okay, it doesn't look like it's going to resolve. Usually if there's like even that moment of hesitation, I'm like, nope, okay, Maxi's not going to resolve. So, uh, we like resolving Maxi this early against Sword Souls, because now they have a lot of decisions to make as far as like how much they actually want to commit to the board, uh, versus how many draws they want to give me. Uh, now, granted, they're going to get their own decent bit of advantage, but we know one of these five cards is another Moye, so that's at least dead. Again, doesn't mean that the other cards can't still be other things that they can play, so... Looks like we're getting more gas, which I like going second. Uh, it's obviously better to have the disruption going first, um, but then having you know, the gas, the fuel to keep uh, you know your plays going, going second there. Uh, they're adding a blackout. Okay, that's actually not that much of a problem because I think I can potentially make use of the super poly to circumvent that. So one of these face downs is blackout. The other one's not going to be called by our cross up because we already know they didn't play that. So it could be a bluff. It could be. Could be any number of things, I don't know. Okay, I think I want to lead with a branded opening here uh, for two reasons. One, I want to bait out some responses. Uh, two, I want to discard this edge of chain to add the patch trick to add the chain and the poly, and then I can lure away the extra edge of chain as opposed to just luring away this edge of chain. So, um, plus a branded opening in grave could potentially be useful against the blackout. So, let's definitely open with that, right? The open with the opening, right? <laughs> okay, so branded opening. Actually, okay, I was gonna say. They do have the max C. Mm, eh, I mean, that's going to have to be fine. We don't have a response for it. Uh, we're going second, so it's also just a little inherently a little bit more fine. But we do need to be mindful of, like, Nibiru, obviously, from this point forward. Um, let's special summon. I have an Outburn in hand. I don't plan on normal summoning right now, so... Um, I'm still just going to special on Outburn, though. That's fine. Okay, and let's see... I actually don't really care if this resolves or not, so I think I'm going to chain block the other way around. Normally, I think I might chain block. It would obviously just depend on what's in the hand, but we've already got Braided Fusion in hand, so... Um, normally, I chain block the other way, right? Like I do Albert, then Edge of Chain, but because I have Braided Fusion in my hand already, I'm going to ch uh, chain block the other way. I want the Patrick more than the uh, Branded and Red as well to get with the Albert's effect. So if they Ash here, or Chi Shao, I, I, that's fine with me. I guess they were going to Chi Shao anyway, and chain blocking doesn't prevent the Chi Shao, but... Um, if they wanted to Ash there, I was basically giving them the opportunity to play Ash Blossom there if they wanted to. Um, super Polymerization. We could actually chain this, pitch the extra branded opening, and then get the search anyway. That would also take care of their blackout now. We can just discard like the other branded opening, or the other Alber, probably the other Alber. Actually, hang on, is the branded opening effect to protect stuff? Yeah, that is once per turn. Okay, so maybe, I'm just trying to think. Okay, obviously we're going to summon, like, what, the Masquerade here? I like this, actually. I th uh, I'm trying to decide if I like the Super Poly or not. I do, I do like the Super Poly. Let's do it here. Uh, I'm actually going to pitch the other branded opening. I want to keep the Alibur just in case if something happens with this fight for a patch, or can I still have an Allure target? Um, yeah, we'll summon a Masquerade. 
So this will turn off my opponent's sword soul black adds. We don't have to worry about that anymore, which is nice. We do need to be mindful of Nibiru still. Uh, and we're going to add a Branded in red. They did banish 10 cards, so it could be in here, but we can't count on that. We can't, like, you know, plan on that being the case, obviously. Also, the other thing we have to be mindful of, too, is that if they didn't have Ash before, they might be drawing into it. It's a little bit harder to use uh, uh, Patchwork to gauge if they have Ash right now because they do have two back row. Again, we know one is Black Cap, but we don't know what the other one is, so it could very easily be something that's going to be uh, chainable to pretty much anything we do anyway. So even though we're playing Patchwork and Allure and we're, they're getting prompts to respond, that's not necessarily an indication that they have the... Ooh, we got the Mercurier. Do I want to keep that? I do, actually. I very, very much want to keep that because now I can stop Nibiru with that. Um, so yeah, we can get rid of the Edge of Chain here. That's fine. All right, cool. I like this. Now let's activate Branded Fusion. And actually, I can just OTK here, right? Can I not just make an Albion and then use that effect and then bring back my Fairy Tail Snow and that's lethal? 8,000, that's 25. I mean, yeah, I should pretty easily have enough here, right? I would think, I would hope. What do I, what seven am I going to banish? I mean, I have enough in Grave. Yeah, okay, this is fine. This card is Fusion Summoned. Banishing mentioned it, and then I can make what another like another masquerade or something. Just do it this way. Make the Albion, Albion F. I have the Mercurier. I'm gonna save Mercurier for Nibiru. I think specifically. Um, if it's like something that's gonna like, if it's like a Valor, I think that's fine. <laughs> hey, look, speak of the devil. Um, I still think that's fine. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna use Branded and Red to bring back pretty much anything to our hand at this point, right? And then we can actually, well, we can just call by. What am I saying? I have a, a call by in my hand. We'll just do that. Again, definitely saving Mercurio for specifically Nibiru. I didn't necessarily have to call by here, but I think it's fine. Okay, I kind of figured an Imperm would be the other face down card, just again, given that I knew it wasn't call by or cross out from the way my opponent played last turn, which again is also fine. Um, yeah, I don't care about that. I'm trying to think here if I want to use Polly or not. No, I'll just use Brandon in red, it's fine. Let's go ahead and activate Branded in red. I'm gonna make another Masquerade, I think, here. Bring back the, yeah, bring back the Albaz. And Special Summon. Yeah, I'll just make the other Masquerade. I wanna make the other Masquerade. Uh, one of the reasons I wanna make the other Masquerade, rather, is because uh, that way, even if my opponent somehow like does get like a board wipe or something, I can still just like, well, my opponent will have to have a monster on their turn, but I have multiple things to bring back, as well as, of course, if they have responses now, they'll have to, um, you know, pay multitudes of life points in order to... Oh, this can't attack, though. Ooh, that can't attack. Oh, that's fine. We have the Fairy Tail Snow and Grief. <laughs> I always forget that with Brandon Red, that they can't attack directly. I always end up forgetting that, but uh, it's okay. We have the <laughs> we have the Fairy Tail Snow and Grave anyway, so... <laughs> uh, it didn't matter that we misplayed slightly there. We did misplay slightly there, but uh, yeah, cool. All right, that was a nice game against the... Uh, I don't think I've actually shown that line really of going for Albion to go for like an OTK before. I don't know if I've shown it at all. I don't I haven't shown it recently at least, so uh, cool that we managed to get that in there. All right, let's go and do another game here. All right, next duel here. Yeah, playing a little bit later, so <laughs> not getting too many other um, opponents with uh, names in English there, but that's oh, whatever. <laughs> I see some people in just games in general be like, oh no, I'm playing against someone from like, you know, like Japan. It's like, well, I, I don't know, that doesn't necessarily mean they're necessarily more skilled. But anyway, um, looks like we're going first again here. We've got a couple of branded openings and an edge of chain. We have a cross that doesn't need to go with them. That's always nice. I'm really liking this hand. This holds a branded in red. I've got a lot of insurance with this hand as far as like uh, protecting against like negations and stuff. So we definitely like that. Let's go ahead and drop down the, whoops, the Alibur here, special summon, boom. And we even get to chain block because we discarded the edge of chain. Yeah, this time I'll definitely chain block the Alibur. 
uh, because I want this branded fusion. Last time we didn't do it because we already had a branded fusion in hand, so uh, this time I'm going to chain block the other way around. Looks like my opponent has a prompt to respond here. Okay, I was going to say, it wasn't at. I don't think it's going to be Ash Blossom because um, they didn't have a prompt to respond to the branded opening. Can I actually chain branded in red here? I think I can. Or no, I can't. But I have the cross that designator, so that's fine. Oh, because I have to add a Despia or I can't add the Egypt chain. Right, 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 right. That makes sense. All right, and this is why I play the one imperm. <laughs> this is why I play the one imperm is for this cross that designator. Um, yeah, I think it's important to, if you're playing the cross that designator, you should have like one imperm, ideally one Valor if you can. I'd like to fit in one Valor to this build. I just don't have the space. Um, and then also the uh, like the Nibiru, just the general anything anything that's gonna hurt your deck that you should be playing at least one of for cross that designator when viable, of course, when viable. So. All right, let's go ahead and throw out the patchwork here. Grab Polly and the other edge of chain. And I think I'll just pitch this extra branded opening for the uh, Lubellion here. It's my plan. Kind of want to keep the extra edge. Oh, well, actually, do I want to keep the chain or the? I'm trying to figure out if I want to keep the chain or the um, extra opening. I feel like I want to keep the chain because I don't know if I can make much use of the opening with the just the other cards I have in my hand right now. Obviously, I can't use it this turn anyway, but I'm talking about for next turn. Hmm. There's no real pro to keeping the Edge of Chain, except that we can maybe fuse with it with the Poly, but I think like the scenarios in which you do that are fairly niche. I'm actually going to pitch the Edge of Chain. I talked myself into it. Again, chain blocking uh, the Lubellion with the Tragedy as always to make sure that we're not going to hit with a Gamma. We would have gotten hit by a Gamma, I think, already if they had one, but you never know. That's not necessarily the case. Okay, so we're adding the Ad Libitum. And then we're making the Mirror Jade. We could actually just do... No, we can't. Never mind. Well, we could, technically. I think we could do a double Masquerade here. I'm trying to figure out if I want to. Well, okay, first we're going to do this. Actually, I think I needed this Alibur to be on board if I was going to do the extra Masquerade. I think I might have needed that Edge of Chain if I was going to do an extra Masquerade here. That's fine. I don't think I'm going to go for it either way. Um, but let's go ahead and do the Poly. For the one Masquerade, using this and this. Yeah, I, you know what? If I kept the Edge of Chain, I could have gone for an extra Masquerade here. I could have played the Branded in Red, gotten back the Alibur, and then fused. Oh, no, wait, the Alibur is banished, right? So, no, I couldn't have, I couldn't have done that. Well, I could have gotten back the Despian Tragedy infused with the Edge of Chain in order to make the second Masquerade. Okay, so that was the reason to keep Edge of Chain. I thought there was a reason to keep Edge of Chain there, but I couldn't quite remember off the top of my head. Uh, do I want to set the branded opening? I'm definitely setting the branded in red. Do I want to set the branded opening as well? Is there a reason not to set the branded opening? I don't think so. Alright, and then... Pass. And Albion. Um... I already have a branded in red and a branded opening down. Do I just add the branded fusion to my hand? Yeah, I think that's the. I think that's fine. It'll give us a discard target if we really need to use this branded opening. And again, we already have these. Yeah, I know. If I kept that edge of chain, yeah, I could have made a second masquerade, which obviously the um, second masquerade would have been very good going into my opponent's turn. Then having to pay twelve hundred as opposed to six hundred for every effect would have definitely been nice. But again, it's yeah, it's whatever. It's not that big of a deal. Could even make it now if I really wanted to. Well, I could have made it like made their standby phase if I really wanted to, but eh, eh, not super concerned about it. Plus, I want to get this mirror jade effect off. I'm gonna flip this to on. I like flipping this to on with when playing this deck because uh, you never know when you're gonna want to trigger the mirror jade or the branded in red. Okay, so we're playing against witchcrafters. I don't want to use the effect yet. Tribute this card, switch someone to Witchcrafter from your deck, banish this card. So the Witchcrafters some contribute themselves as a quick effect. I'm just trying to figure out I think I I think I might pop off Mirror Jade like just in response to this effect. 
and just banish whatever it's that's gonna come out as it comes out. Wait, no, I don't want to do it in response. Yeah, no, no, duh, because if I activate it right now, then I'll have to, it'll be chain too, and I'll have to banish one of my own monsters. No, no, yeah, okay, we're good. <laughs> I don't, I haven't seen this one before, I don't think. Witchcraft will be destroyed, or no, wait. Oh, okay, this is fine, yeah. Okay, Madame Vera comes down, that's pretty expected. Um, feel quick effect to get the effects of all face up. Yeah, no, definitely want to wait to use the effect in response to Madame Vera's effect there to negate all of our monsters if they decide to do that. Opponent set a spell or trap, that's fine. Let me see something real quick. Guardian Chimera is cards, not monsters, right? Do, 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 do. Cards, yep, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. So, I'm thinking if they move to end phase, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna. I'm going to activate Brandon Red as Chainlink 1, and then as Chainlink 2, I'll use Mirror Jade's effect. They'll negate with Madame Vera, that's fine. But I want to do it during the end phase when their stuff is coming back, I think. Or do I want to do it during my turn, after it's already come back? Because it can recycle their spells, right? I don't care if this scroll comes back, this is completely irrelevant. Um, I'm just thinking about the card they discarded with Madame Vera. This is say during the end phase or during the end of the turn? During your end phase. So actually, there's not they're, they're gonna be able to get it back, I think, anyway. No matter what the timing I do during the end phase is here. But I definitely want to do this stuff during the end phase. Yeah. Alright, opponent, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? What are you going to do? They set one card, which kinda indicates to me that they're getting ready to pass back to me. That's why I started talking about the end phase there. Okay, it's before the end of the main phase. No, I don't want to activate. I want to move into the end phase. Uh, that's actually an important distinction because if you choose to activate stuff during the end of the main phase, your opponent has the option to then continue their main phase. So, um, let's see. Oh, you know what? No, 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 no. I don't want to branded red then mirror jade. I want to mirror jade because then they'll chain Madame Vera and then I'll brand in red using the mirror jade as a material and then it'll, it'll activate anyway. So that's, yeah, we'll, we'll start with the mirror jade effect here. Um, do I want a spell or a trap? Yeah, I want another Brandon Red, so I'll send the Albion here. I don't want the Fallen of Albaz. See if they chain Madame Ver. And then, yeah, once they do, then I'll chain Brandon and Red, get back the Ad Libidum, fuse. All the stuff on my board. And the Guardian... Oh, you know what, though? Is it up to... Hang on, I'm just thinking about... Story cards equal to the number... Ooh, you know what? Hmm. Shoot. If I branded in red for Guardian Chimera, then Mirror Jade's effect is still going to resolve and I'll have to banish my own Guardian Chimera, right? I mean, I do still want to change. Uh, do I still want to chain branded in red? Do I care that this gets negated? What do they discard? Um, that's fine. I don't care about that. Do I care that this is going to get negated? I don't think I do actually. Because again, if I if I activate this, if I do what I was talking about doing in branded in red, if I had another monster in hand, actually, I could do it. This would be fine. But because I specifically have to destroy two cards with the Guardian Chimera. This is fine. This is gonna get negated, I don't care. Nah, it's fine. Actually, I kinda wanna... kinda wanna activate Brandon in red anyway, now that I think about it. Ooh, you know what? Okay, wait, is this getting set or does that get added back to the hand? Okay, it gets added back to the hand. Well, if I was gonna activate Brandon in red anyway, then I should've just <laughs> done it. Because I don't think I should have summoned another Masquerade. Which would have allowed this to get banished anyway. Eh, whatever. Nah, that's fine. Although now we could just Guardian Chimera and blow stuff up, now that we've let it resolve. We could just do that too. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> so indecisive, I really just could not make up my mind at all there. 
But yeah, I do think this is the better, or the, the way to go here. Not the better. Okay, yeah, they conceded. We got it. <laughs> cool, so we just did a lot of overthinking against uh, Witchcrafters for a fairly easy win there. Um, yeah, I don't know, sometimes I kind of, like, not hesitate, but sometimes I wonder if I should show my live games, because that is a lot of what it is. Although, I know a lot of people like to see, like, the actual... Um, thought process that goes into how you make the decisions you make mid-game. So uh, that is a lot of what I tend to do, though. I'm like hemming and hawing and like, uh, should I activate this? Well, I should have activated this if I wanted to do it this way. Well, actually, because I did it this way, then now I can activate it this way. And da 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 da, -da. You know, it's it's like, that, uh, it's like that office quote, that really infamous one of Michael Scott being like, you know, uh, sometimes I'll start a sentence and I don't even know uh, how it's going to end. I just hope I find it along the way. I feel that way about a lot of plays I make in Master Duel. I'm not going to lie. Um, so we got a couple of nice live games in there. Um, I think it's going to be good enough for this video. Let's go ahead and move now to the outro. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching all the way to the very end. I very much appreciate that. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed a couple of live games there. Uh, I definitely plan to do more live games for sure. So uh, with, with other decks too, not just with Branded Despia. So definitely be on the lookout for those. as Those tend to roll out. Um, I'm going to record it, at least try to record some more live games uh, in this particular setting. And then, like I alluded to towards the beginning of the video, I think uh, just the way that my life and the schedule are going to pan out in the near future, I should have more time to sit down and do uh, this kind of recording as well. So, um, yeah, I definitely want to get back into it. Uh, as far as the live games go because I do like I mentioned towards the end of that last game I do like to offer that perspective right of like uh, kind of what I'm thinking mid game uh, I do definitely see the value in that as opposed to just talking about what you know post uh, you know you know, post game, what my mirror, my mirror, because I'm looking at mirror jade here as I'm talking uh, what my thought process was uh, so um, yeah, again, just thank you for watching all the way to the very end like this. I greatly appreciate it. Also greatly appreciate those of you who are commenting and subscribing. Comments, as always, as ever, if you have suggestions relating to gameplay or deck building or just anything relating to the channel, I'm always looking for that feedback. Uh, love the constructive criticism I get from you all, that uh, nice community-based learning that I love to talk about and I love to just, you know, have in my life in general. So, um, definitely grateful for all of you who are uh, contributing in the comments there. And subscribing, uh, yeah, that's going to get you notifications of when my videos drop, which does happen every single day. So know that when you subscribe, you do, oops, sorry about that, bumped my mic cord there. Uh, know that when you subscribe, you do get a daily Master Duel video out of me. But yeah, that's going to be all the time I got for this one. So without further ado, this is Xlex. I'm signing out and I hope you guys have a fantastic day.